everybody. We are live. This is our first time doing a YouTube live. We are very used to doing Facebook lives, but this is the first time we're doing it on this platform. So bear with us if there's any technical challenges, but it looks like we are up and running. And tonight we're going to talk about something that is probably one of our biggest complaints that we get from clients, which is barking. Barking can be so overwhelming for the people that are living with it. And oftentimes the biggest piece of of advice that you'll see online or hear from coworkers is to ignore it. But unfortunately, depending on what kind of barking it is and why your dog is doing it, that might not work. And even if it's that right kind of barking, it might not be enough. So today we're going to talk about the different kinds of barking, why your dog might bark and what you should do to eliminate it. Because let's face it, we all want quiet households. Now, the important thing to remember is that depending on the breed of your dog, vocalization might be more common. Some breeds are predisposed to be more vocal than others. So it's important to have realistic expectations. Um, as we are going through this, if you guys have questions, if you're here with us, please feel free to drop those into the comment section and we will be sure to get to them. So first, what do we do if our dog's barking? Well, we have to identify why the dog is barking. There are a variety of reasons that the dog can bark. And like I mentioned earlier, it depends on what kind it is to know how to handle it appropriately. So the kinds of barking that your dog could do, the, a common one is attention seeking. Your dog might also bark from boredom. They can bark from frustration and they can also bark because they are stressed out. And there are different reasons that our dogs might experience stress. So let's first talk about our attention seeking barking. So what does this look like? If you are standing in your kitchen or your living room and your dog is directly in front of you and looking at you and barking, that's probably attention seeking barking. They don't always have to be right underneath your feet, but they're definitely going to be looking at you and engaged with you. The reason dogs do this is to get our attention. So we have to be really careful because it's so instinctual for us to hear a noise and to look. But looking at our dogs, talking to our dogs, touching our dogs, telling our dogs quiet, unfortunately, all of that reinforces the barking, which means that it makes it stronger and it's harder to get rid of. So step one, we need to make sure that we completely ignore attention-seeking barking. We don't want to look at them, talk to them, or touch them. And then we want to be waiting for that moment that they do something better. So generally when we're talking about barking, that means that they get quiet for a moment. So if our dog is barking for attention and then they close their lips and get quiet, then we want to reinforce them. And yes, Christy, it is so hard to ignore the barking dog. Trust me, I understand, especially when they're bigger or if their noises are really cute, like I imagine yours are because you have huskies right? That vocalization can be hard to ignore, but we really need to make sure we that, that we do ignore it. We also want to make sure that if we have friends or family or kids, anyone else who's interacting with the dog needs, needs to be on the same game plan, right? They need to be consistent because if I ignore the barking, it's going to improve a little. But if my husband comes home and he reinforces the barking by engaging with the dog, we're sending mixed messages to the dog and it's going to be a lot harder for us to get rid of the behavior. We can even see an increase in the behavior because the dog's frustrated and confused. So make sure that everybody is on the same uh, game plan in terms of ignoring the dog and reinforcing quiet. Now, you might want to keep an eye on when you notice this attention-seeking behavior pop up. So if when I sit down to watch TV, the dog generally comes over and starts barking at me and I notice that this pattern is starting to happen, I really like to be as proactive as possible instead of just reactive. Oftentimes when our dogs do things that are naughty, we tend to pay attention to them. And then when they're being really good, we ignore them. We forget about them. So when we're talking about our attention seeking barking, if I notice it's happening in patterns, then I try to be proactive about giving the dog another outlet during that time. So they're less likely to rehearse that behavior. The other thing that I want to look at is is my dog getting enough outlets for this energy? Because if they're not getting enough physical and mental stimulation, which we're gonna talk about a little bit more later, if they're not getting enough, they're actually more likely to be vocal. So I wanna make sure that all of those needs are being met for the dog. 
So that's attention seeking barking. The dog's looking at us, they're engaged with us, they're asking for something we wanna completely ignore and then reinforce quiet and make sure that everyone is consistent. We can also get dogs that bark from stress. So if your dog is barking on leash when they see other people or dogs, if your dog barks when they hear noises like a doorbell or knocking, if they bark when they see other people or dogs walking past your house, these are all vocalizations that usually stem from stress. And we don't want to ignore these because think about the UPS guy. He comes to your door, he knocks, your dog starts barking. And what does the UPS guy do? Well, he leaves. He has other things to do. But in your dog's mind, that barking worked. It got the scary UPS guy to leave. So we want to make sure that we're doing what we can to prevent the barking from happening. And this looks different depending on which situation you're seeing the barking happen. If the barking is happening from noises like knocking and the doorbell, you can temporarily put up a sign that says dog in training, please do not knock or please drop the package. And if you're having friends or family come over, let them know that you're working on this and you don't want them to knock. They can text you or give you a call when they get there. And this way your dog isn't rehearsing that behavior. So it's not getting any stronger. Uh, if your dog is barking through the windows or the door at people that might be passing, my form of management in that scenario is to either put decals on the windows and those will block that vision. So you still get all that great sunlight coming in but your dog won't be able to see figures walking past your house. You can also just close your blinds or your curtains, okay? And this is just gonna be prevention to help that bark from happening in the first place. And if the dog is barking when you are out on walks, then I recommend that you choose quieter times of the day and quieter places to do your walking. And the moment you see somebody else or something else that might trigger that barking response from your dog, you can change directions or use a car or some bushes to hide behind, again, to give your dog a visual block. Now that's not gonna get rid of the barking. It's just gonna prevent it from happening. That's our management technique. But when we have that stress-related barking, we also need to make sure that we're adding in training to that program. So when you're training for that stress-related barking, you can generally do two things. One, I like to have an interrupter. So I teach a positive interrupter to the dog, which basically means, hey, check in with me, good things are gonna happen. And it can be their name. If you check out our YouTube um, channel, we do have a video called The Name Game, and this is a great thing to play. And I actually use that same exact method but I teach a different word or a different sound. So the sound that I use is <laughs> high pitch, sounds really different. That staccato generally gets the dog's attention. And the same thing with the name game, I make, the, I make that noise and then I pay the dogs so that they make the association with that noise meaning treats. And it starts to teach the dogs how to check in with me. Lots of people will use a word like thank you or that's enough, that's all. Whatever your word is, just be consistent and teach your dog that that noise means that good things are happening with me and they should check in. So for example, once I've done a little bit of training with that word, if I forgot to close the blinds and somebody walks past the house, the dog starts to alert you that somebody is there and you can give that positive interrupter. So make that silly noise or say that's enough. The dog stops barking, comes to you, and gets their cookies. So then the behavior isn't continuing, right? It's not that constant barking. In addition to having a nice little interrupter, I like to work on a little bit of desensitization and counter conditioning with any of those triggers that might start that stress-related barking. So again, we talked about knocking at the door and the doorbell, and this is a great way, that, uh, a great example to use for that, that pairing. So what I would do is I would move away from the front door, an interior door, right? An office door, a closet door. And what I'm gonna do is just knock, knock really quietly and immediately pay the dog. You can mark it with a clicker if you're using a clicker, or you can just say yes and feed the dog. And the dog's gonna be like, what the heck just happened, <laughs> right? And you're gonna do it again. And this time you're gonna knock a little louder and pay the dog, a little louder, pay the dog. And you're gonna repeat this process until you can knock pretty much full volume at an interior door. And the dog's like, hey, that was awesome, where's my cookie? When you get to that point, then you can go back to the front door. 
And you can do the same thing with a doorbell if the doorbell is the trigger for your dog. Generally, what I like to do is when the dogs are out in the backyard running around, I'll record on my phone the sound of that doorbell and then turn that phone volume down nice and low so you can start with that sound really quiet. And then you're gonna do the same thing. Press play, the dog hears it, pause, yes, and give a cookie. And over several sessions, you're gonna be able to get that volume higher and higher. Now, if you're in the middle of this training session and your dogs start barking, that's a good signal to us that we made it too hard, too fast for them. And we need to turn that volume back down. Now, if the trigger is something visual, like somebody walking past your house that triggers your dog to bark, or maybe you're on a walk with your dog, your dog sees somebody and they start to bark. Instead of using a noise that predicts food, in that circumstance, you're going to use that visual sight line to predict food. So you're sitting, you know, on the couch, your windows are in front of you, your dog's on the couch next to you, and you're going to have some treats, easy to access, either a bowl on the table or some in a pocket of a vest that you're wearing. And the windows are going to be open. You're going to be sitting watching TV. And the second you see someone pop up on the windows behind the TV, yes, and pay your dog. And the whole time that person's walking past the house, you can keep paying the dog for quiet. And this will start to teach them that when they see somebody walk past the house, good things happen. And over time, that is going to change how they feel about seeing that stressful thing outside the house and it eliminates the barking. So not only are you helping them feel better emotionally, but you're solving that stress-related barking problem. Now, it's important to remember that anytime you're not in a structured training session with them, I do close those blinds to make sure that they don't rehearse that behavior. Because again, right? The mailman comes, knocks on the door, your dog barks and they leave. So your dog thinks that barking works to get the person to go away. So closing those blinds, disabling doorbells and alarms, that'll all help prevent the dog from rehearsing that behavior when you're outside of those training sessions. And if you're having trouble with eliminating this behavior on your own, just remember you don't have to live with that bark. You can work with a professional that uses positive reinforcement training methods, either virtually like us or in person with us or another certified trainer to help you get rid of that barking so that you can have a quieter household. So that's our stress related barking. OK, so that's attention seeking already and our stress related. Our dogs can also bark from boredom. So how do we tell the difference between boredom, attention seeking, right, stress related? If, you're, if your dog is not looking at you, okay, so it's not a tent seeking, and they're not directly looking out the window at a trigger, or they didn't just hear a doorbell go off, they're just kind of walking around the house and you hear an occasional vocalization. That's usually boredom related. And in that case, we're going to want to increase how much enrichment, training, both mental and physical, the dog is getting. Because just like with our attention-seeking behavior, our attention-seeking barking, we will get an increase in that behavior if the dog has a bunch of pent-up energy, okay? So we want to make sure that we're giving them lots of outlets, and we're going to talk more about that in just a minute. You can also, when you have that, you know, boredom-related or attention-seeking related barking, you can kind of get into this unfortunate uh, routine, right? Where the dog barks, you ignore, then you pay attention to them and engage with them. And then the moment you stop, you get that behavior pop up again. That's also a good signal. Dog needs something else to do. Okay. So we can also get some frustration related training, uh, barking from the dogs. This normally happens when we're in a training session with them. So a good Good example of this, we see this actually with some dogs when we work on the skill of backup or the skill of settle on a mat. So let's say you're standing next to your dog's bed and you say place or settle and the dog does it, but they bark in the process, right? And then maybe you ask them to come to you and to sit and they do it, but they also bark. If you're seeing intermittent barking like that pop up in a training session, it usually is an indication that they're frustrated. And dogs will get frustrated when they think that they should be getting reinforced for something and they're not, or if they're confused about something. So whenever I see an occasional bark kind of pop up in my training session, then I usually stop 
the session right there because I don't want that behavior to accidentally get tied in with the barking, right? The last thing I want is to be sitting on the couch and go settle and the dog barks and goes over to their mat. It's kind of, kind of counterproductive when I'm asking them to relax. So I don't want to keep practicing that skill because it could accidentally get tied in to whatever behavior I'm working on, right? I don't want sit and bark. I just want sit. So step one is to stop that training session if you think that that barking is accidentally going to get tied in. And then the next time I go and practice, I usually prop my phone up on a bookshelf or against a wall and I record the training session because it's easier for me to see what's going on in the training session when I'm not in the middle of it. Right? When I'm in the middle of training my dog, there's so many other things going on. It's usually pretty hard to evaluate why something might be happening. But if I can look at a recording afterwards, it's a little bit easier for me to understand where my dog is maybe offering additional behavior, where I should be reinforcing them more than I am. So that would be my recommendation there is to end that training session. And next time you go to practice, hit record. Usually, not always, but usually a good solution for that frustration barking that happens during training sessions is to make the process easier, which usually means that I have to either split that behavior into smaller pieces, right? So if I'm doing settle on a mat, I might just go back to reinforcing the dog for standing on the bed instead of all the way down. Or it could mean that I move directly next to the bed instead of that distance that I just tried to add. I have to make it easier for the dog to earn that reinforcement and then find smaller steps along the way as I increase the difficulty of that behavior. So when our dogs are barking, right, we have to step one, kind of evaluate what is the purpose of this bark? Why is this happening? Is the dog trying to get attention from me? Is the dog frustrated with something that might be going on? Is the dog bored, right? Maybe I haven't met all of their energy demands for the day. Um, or is it stress related? Is there something in the environment that's directly triggering the dog? So if you guys can identify what that barking is for you, feel free to drop that into the comments um, and I'll, I'll try to help you guys troubleshoot your individual barking needs. One of the things that we want to make sure, is, again, is that our dogs get enough exercise. So with our dogs being home with us during the pandemic, a lot of people saw an increase in barking from their dogs, especially when they're trying to sit down and have a Zoom meeting with, with clients. Um, it can be a little challenging for them to then have to manage their dog. And it's hard to ignore because you don't want your dog barking in the background. So being proactive in terms of the amount of exercise your dog gets is going to be really important. And then you might find that offering them an alternative alternative activity while you're doing something where you have, they have to be quiet is really important. So you could offer them some kind of chew or bone, a bully stick, a Kong. And not only is gonna, that going to distract them to keep them quiet and prevent them from barking, but it is also going to reinforce them for being quiet, right? Because they can't bark while they chew a bully stick or bark while they work on a Kong. And that will help you reinforce a better behavior during a time when they generally would be barking at you. So enough exercise beforehand and then be proactive with those puzzles, okay? Um, the exercise can also uh, be a little challenging right now with an increase in temperature. Um, I don't know about you guys and your dogs that you have. I know Christy has Huskies. Um, I live in a climate where it's really warm and I live with double coated dogs. So we, our exercise is changing a little bit right now compared to what we normally do. And you're more likely to see an increase in that barking behavior, no matter what the cause of it is, if the dog's needs are not being met. So even though, you know, you can't go out on those walks because of the heat, it's a good idea to try to do some indoor training sessions or indoor fitness or get out really early and really late to get those exercise needs met. Christy says that their main challenge is attention or demand barking. I know what he wants. He wants the, <laughs> the food, uh, which we are weaning out now that he's at weight. Yeah. So if you know that um, oh, Rhaegar is also low on exercise, which as he starts to feel better, uh, which is probably a part of it. Yeah. So definitely. And remember too, like I, with health issues or um, summer temps, um, we, Exercise doesn't always have to mean physical, which we often think of it that way, but maybe increasing a little bit of training, teaching a new trick 
for that food, um, putting it in food puzzles instead of just putting it in a bowl can help. Um, you also, if you wanna be again, proactive instead of reactive, if I'm getting that demand barking or attention seeking barking because it's around dinner time, you can always mix up what time of day you feed them, sometimes being ahead of schedule, sometimes being behind schedule. So then that way they don't get in the routine of asking for it. If we're barking for the food, you definitely wanna make sure that you don't get up and go give them what they want. Because although we want to respect our dog's needs and we certainly want to make sure that those needs are being met, I love when my dogs can communicate with me. But if I get up and go feed after they've been barking for it, then I'm reinforcing that barking and it's going to get bigger and more intense. And then if a couple weeks down the road, I decide, okay, I actually don't like this behavior, it's going to get even harder for you to eliminate the behavior because the behavior has worked, right? The behavior worked for a certain amount of time. So then not only do you have demand barking, but you also get an increase because the dog gets frustrated. They're like, why isn't this barking working anymore? Maybe you can't hear me. Should I get louder? <laughs> Maybe you don't see me. Let me jump on you instead. So being consistent with that uh, ignoring process and reinforcement is really key. The other thing you can do if you're noticing that that demand barking again is happening for something like food or something like play, you can make sure that your dog goes to do something else before you get up and give them what they want. So let's say you're sitting down uh, on the couch watching some TV and your dog's like, hello, it's dinner time. Ignore that barking completely. Try not to look at them or talk to them. And when they go lay down, when they go disengage and do something else, that's when I stand up and go give them the food. So then I make sure that I'm not accidentally reinforcing that barking. Instead, I'm reinforcing a nice, calm, quiet behavior. And that leads really nicely into the next tip. So if you've got a dog that's pretty vocal around the house, make sure that's not the only time you're engaging with them. We wanna make sure that we reinforce calm and quiet behavior throughout the day. So if you're spending a little more time at home still because of COVID, maybe working at home, it's a great time to work on it. Stick some extra kibble in your pockets. So don't put all the food in their bowl or their puzzle. Stick some extras with you or even have some treat jars or treat stations placed around the house. And when the dog is being quiet, when they're relaxed, that's when you want to engage with them. And I just really quietly grab a cookie, nice job, and drop a cookie down to the ground so that I'm capturing those moments when my dog is quiet and paying them for it. And then they're learning that this is what I want from them instead. Again, be proactive instead of reactive. So try to find patterns in the behavior from your dog. If it's happening certain times of day, that's a really good indicator of where we can kind of step in and just change the routine a little bit for our dogs to make sure that they don't even get the opportunity to practice the behavior, okay? So proactive, make sure you're identifying the cause of the behavior, make sure that they're not getting that reinforcement that they're looking for, and then make sure that we're giving them lots of opportunities to reinforce something better and that we're reinforcing that behavior. I know having food around and in pockets can be a little annoying. Trust me, I have washed clothes plenty of times with hot dogs and string cheese in the pockets, and it's gross. But Having some processed treats even hanging around the house in treat stations is a really nice way to kind of jumpstart this behavior and make sure that you guys are creating good habits from your dogs. Okay. So if anybody who is watching along with us has any additional questions, I'm here for you guys. Feel free to drop those into the comments. Otherwise, what I will do is keep an eye on this thread for those who weren't able to tune in live. If you have some questions about your dog's barking or specifically your household, how you can get everybody on board, how you can change your own behavior or your own house to get the house a little bit more quiet. I am here to help you out. All right. I hope that that was helpful for you. I hope it helps you identify the cause of your dog's barking and figure out what you can do at home to eliminate it because we all want quiet households. We just need to make sure that we're sending our dogs really clear communication signals and doing what we can to set them up for success. Dogs with pent up energy, dogs with 
without enough outlets, dogs that are exposed to lots of stimuli are more likely to fail. And then they're frustrated and we are frustrated. So we want to make sure we're doing our part as well to help the dog be successful. And then remember, help yourself be successful. If you've got that Zoom call, close the blinds, turn off the doorbell, give your dog an activity, turn on some music, try to find ways to help the dog be quiet. Keep those treat stations so that it's easy for you to grab the treats and pay because if it's not easy access for you, you're not going to do it either. So we need to set the dog up for success and ourselves. All right, everybody. I hope that was helpful. If there's a topic that you want to hear about on our next YouTube live, you can drop that into the comments as well. We will be taking suggestions on more topics that you guys need help with. All right. Have a good night.